Hey everybody, it's ZS Caravalli from ZK Research with Will Townsend. We're at Fortinet's headquarters and we're here for What's New in Security. I think this is episode three. I think it is. Yeah, so yeah. we just wrapped up our analyst day uh, with Fortinet. It's, uh, it coincided with their 25th uh, anniversary, so. Happy birthday, Fortinet. Yeah, so they turned 25. Uh, and let's talk about what we heard here. Uh, you know, Fortinet's an interesting company, probably one of the more underappreciated security companies. Yeah. Uh, well, and even calling them a security company in a lot of ways is incorrect. While they build security products. It's secure also, networking. Yeah, right? they also have a full line of networking products and other things that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, um, I think maybe a good place to start is what has been their competitive advantage for years, which is price performance right. driven by the fact that they create their own silicon. And so yeah. they didn't, they talked a little bit about that, but I actually think that that is something they should talk more about. I agree. And, uh, you know, what do you think of that strategy of, because most vendors use merchant silicon layer right. on software, yeah. but they build the whole stack. Right. Well, you know, by leaning into custom silicon, it provides a competitive advantage. Um, you know, we learned this week that it's about, you know, um, performance, it's about power efficiency. Um, and it's also about programmability, Zaya. So um, it just provides, you know, from my perspective, future headroom for additional mm -hmm. capabilities. Yeah, and what I like about the silicon strategy is, if you look across any industry, right, you look at why the GPU exists, yeah. right? Because custom or uh, off-the-shelf silicon, and in fact, uh, uh, Jensen always jokes about this, it runs word fine. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Right. But uh, if you're gonna do any kind of an accelerated computing, you need something with a little more horsepower. Purpose built. Purpose right? built, right. Yep. And that's, and so you could argue that there's no workload that's more processor intensive than security, right. except maybe AI, yeah. uh, although AI for security. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you know, from that perspective, I think um, the ability to create your own silicon loaded up with the features you want, right. um, brings that price performance, but also creates, and because Fortinet for the most part builds all their own products, yeah. you wind up with a very consistent set of features mm -hmm. across all those products. And I think that's another interesting aspect as well, because most of the other broad security vendors have built their portfolios through acquisition. Yeah. And so over time, they integrate these things together, right. but there's always a period of time where you're trying to put them together that you don't actually have you know, that unified story. Yeah, you know, and that requires refactoring and, and whatnot. And, you know, Fortinet has acquired companies over the years, but there's been a very discreet focus on organic roadmap development. What I really came away from this week uh, with a better appreciation is how with like the FortiGate, you know, fire, you know uh, Fortinet is known for its firewall, but with the FortiGate, they can move customers down a continuum of different services, starting with, you know, ZTNA and then moving into a unified SASE solution and really reducing that friction for customers and, and, you know, delivering more value for their customers as well. Yeah. And so let's, you know, pivot the discussion. So the, the, the silicon is the foundation of the products. Yeah. I think, you know, they like the other broad based security vendors have been pushing this concept of platformization mm -hmm. of security or the security platform in which you can consolidate multiple functions into you know, a, a service or a box or whatever, and they use the FortiGate for that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think over the past, uh, you know, since the, since the rise of AI, I think this concept of, of uh, platforming security has really shifted from something that was maybe a nice to have, because mm -hmm. you could, you know, companies have managed to muddle their way through a bunch of point products right. to something that's a need to have because the complexity that AI brings I don't know if you can cobble it together anymore. No, I, I don't think you can either. And, you know, you touched on this, uh, the tool sprawl issue. I mean, the stats are, you know, they're alarming. And I think we've talked about this on yeah. you know, a prior podcast as well. Um, and so when you take a platform approach, it allows you to sort of consolidate that. And then you start leveraging things like a common data layer and you just get more value and insight out of, out of a platform from my perspective. Yeah. And uh, I think one of the, the platforms, the products that was adjacent <clears throat> to the firewall was SASE. Right. Right. And in fact, um, they've done a, you know, when the industry was changing from traditional WANs to SD-WAN, they did a really nice job of building an SD-WAN and FortiGate. Right. So being able to transform your WAN became pretty simple. And then, of course, if you're going to play an SD-WAN, 
then you of course needed the security tools yep. or the SSE stack right. to right, get to SASE. To get yeah. to SASE. Yeah. And but their approach to SASE is a little bit different than what you're going to see from everybody else yeah. because it's a hybrid SASE strategy in which you can run the SASE services either in the cloud right. or on prem. Or on prem. Yeah. 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 And that has not when you think of just if somebody were to ask you what is SSE a lot of people will tell you it's cloud delivered security, right. but it's actually a set of capabilities like Swig and Casby yeah. and things like that, Z yeah. Zero Trust. It doesn't, the, nowhere in any definition I've seen does it say it has to be in the cloud. Sure. And these guys have leveraged it on prem. So, yeah. 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 You know, and would you want to run it both on prem and in the cloud? I don't know. I mean, with the trend uh, around modern AI uh, workloads and applications, with some very highly regulated industries to bring yeah. that on-prem because you don't want that, that data traversing the cloud, nor do you want to pay for the egress um, to do that. It makes perfect sense, right? So I think the timing for their architecture, um, I mean, to your point, it's been around for a while, but it's becoming even that much more relevant given where modern AI is driving things. Yeah, well, this is where it comes down to use case. Okay, so yeah. are you going to want to run your uh, SSE services in the cloud? Uh, or on-prem. Well, if you're a retailer, or sorry, if you're like a, a, a retailer with a bunch of off, a bunch of small branch locations with mm -hmm. one or two, you know, devices in each location, no, you're going to run that out of the right, cloud. Right. But if you're a manufacturing company yep. with a bunch of, you know, machines, uh, autonomous machines, and a bunch of data, and you're in a regulated vertical that requires, uh, you know, your data to be you know, kept sovereign, that's yep. when you'd probably run it on-prem. And so, sure. what what Fortinet gives is some choice to their customers. And I think that's important. So if you are the type of company that, you know, for whatever reason, wants more control over your data, and yeah. I'm not saying it's more secure, because yeah. right, the cloud systems are secure, I'm just saying you have sure. more control, yeah. then you're better off running it on-prem. Yeah, no, I totally agree. You know, and, and one of the use cases that I was really, you know, impressed with was what the company is doing within IoT. Uh, in manufacturing, and okay, um, yeah. it's a highly fragmented market. You've got a lot of different, you know, vendors. You've got embedded products. You've got just a myriad of products. And for many, many years, there's been a lack of standardization. Um, and Fortinet's been doing this for quite a while. But they're they're working with, you know, an ecosystem. Um, they've identified, you know, basically the protocols that are required to manage the security of like. And when I and I asked, you know, the the the, the leadership here, like ninety five percent plus of of the security of of all of these, you know, very disparate devices, and um, I think it's one of their best kept secrets, man. I mean, I you know, this is my first visit to headquarters, yeah. and uh, I was really blown away by that. So I'm I'm probably going to be writing that up in the near term. Yeah, in fact, the headquarters actually has a a bunch of um, different rooms that show you different use cases. Uh, OT, IT, yeah. uh, IoT, uh, retail, healthcare, things like healthcare. that. And, and the OT, uh, IoT one was pretty impressive. And it does show you just it's how different the vendors are that serve that space. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, it's funny, the guy who was giving us the presentation said a lot of these OT devices will live for like 20 years. Yeah. Right. And it's not like and they're critical systems. Sure. So it's not like you can apply security patches and reboot the thing. Right. So the ability to be able to deliver security from the network yeah. becomes mission critical in that environment. And, and that's an area for whatever reason, uh, a lot of vendors don't focus on. Yeah. And I think because it's hard, yeah. you yeah. got to build all your systems to be fanless. Right. It's not traditional rack mount systems. Exactly. Right? You've got different ways to like yeah. hang these things. You've got environmental you know, concerns that you have to deal with as well. So yeah, it's, it's a yeah. very unique environment when you look at OT. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the other areas they spend a lot of time talking to us about was the SOC tools. Right. And again, when you think of Fortinet, most people you don't, think- You don't think of that. No, you yeah. think of Fortigate, Firewall, yeah. you know, maybe SASE, certainly SD-WAN now, right, right. but when it comes to SOC, Simmons, Soar, that's a whole different group of companies. Right. I think they've, uh, um, they've got an emerging solution. They do. Uh, in some cases, they did talk about displacing some of the, the leaders. Yeah. Um, I think if you're a really, you know, heavy, uh, you know, SIM shop that, diagnoses a bunch of data and things like that, you're probably going to stick to your solution. But for a lot of organizations, I think what Fortinet delivers actually is a very good solution. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. And traditionally, the company's been very focused on the mid-market. Yeah. They've been moving up, you know, over the years. What I really liked was what they're doing, you know, potentially with SOC as a service to, to kind yeah. of cover that, that mid-market type customer. I actually think the, the mid-market's a real sweet spot for them because 
um, that isn't when you think of the traditional vendors in Simmons or you know Splunk and Q Radar yeah. and things. They have focused very large enterprise. They do, yeah. Right, and uh, uh, they've got all the integrations with a lot of the other mm -hmm. data players. But serving the meat needs of the big market is a much different animal. You, meet, you need a lighter weight product. Yep. You know, better interfaces, things like that. And so that's something I think that's been an underserved area for a long time. I think so too. Yeah. And again, from my perspective, you know, another mm -hmm. one of their best kept secrets. So yeah, well, it seems like there's a lot of those. There's a lot of those. So yeah. we're trying to address yeah. that. Yeah. You know, on behalf of Portana. Yeah, and the last area to maybe talk about is just is AI, right? And uh, uh, obviously, there's two aspects that all securities play. Yeah. Vendors play. There's AI for security. Yep. So that's being able to help companies um, uh, secure the use of AI within mm -hmm. the organization, and then there's also AI for security. Mm -hmm. So using AI to improve security operations. Yeah. Yep. And uh, was there? Did you see anything you liked there? Yeah, like uh, the AI assist. I yeah. like the fact that they didn't call it a co-pilot, yeah. number one. So that, that, that whole notion of reducing the friction, providing a natural language interface, ensuring that a human is in the loop, I felt was, was really powerful. And it plays really to their strengths when you, when you historically look at what they've done with secure networking. Well, and here is where um, it is going to take them to you know, perhaps up level their marketing and, yeah. and things. Because I do think when you think about the effectiveness of AI, it comes down to what? The data that you have, right? right? And so their platform actually being built off one stack, right? And one set of silicon. A uh, consistent yeah. operating system and yeah, that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, that should, in theory, provide better AI than somebody who's trying to bring in data from a bunch of different acquisitions, right? right and right, so, right. you know, for them to be able to, uh, I guess, to get an advantage, it would, would really be able to pre be predicated on them being able to kind of explain that in a way right. that's easy to well, understand. Well, and, and, and demonstrate it as well, because yeah. I think one of the challenges that the company's faced with is that it's known for the firewall, right? And, um, and to your point, um, and we've spent some time, you know, with, uh, with the, the, the most recently appointed CMO here. Um, Jamie. Jamie, yeah. yeah um, that, you know, there, there's, a, there's a concerted focus and effort to go, to go tell that story, uh, to work with analysts like you and I, um, to help, you know, tell that story as well. So um, I think we can expect some pretty good things from the company moving forward. Yeah, well, certainly I think I've, you know, I've followed Portnet for a long time and I've seen a lot of starts and stops where yeah. they start pushing a message and then they move on to the next thing. And I think the company has historically operated on the fact that if you build really good products, which they do, yeah. the customers will come. And you can't argue with that. I mean, they've got... Yeah almost a million customers. Right, right. it's crazy. So, it's like yeah. 890,000 yeah. and like, I mean, did you, well, did you add a zero there? I think they said it's over nine, 900 now. 900,000 Yeah, now. since they yeah. updated the slide. Yeah. And uh, the 55% of the world's firewalls. So right. obviously building good products does lead yeah. to success. Uh, where I'd like to see him go now is actually, you know, becoming a real thought leader in security. Right. Not just through building good products, but being able to take that message they have and articulate it externally. Yeah, you yeah. know, and, and focus on the business outcome because, you know, the time that we spent with, uh, with the management team this week, um, there was a lot of product slides, right? And, and I think Jamie understands that as well. And I think for them to sort of move beyond, you know, that sort of, you know, that engineering mindset, they need to really focus on business outcome. And we saw a little bit of that uh, while we were here this mm -hmm. week, but I think that is an area of opportunity. For well, Florida. where I think they did do a good job of that is uh, presentation after presentation, the, they back ended it with customer example after customer example. Sure. And I thought those were very good to see kind of the ROI the customer got, the amount of time that they saved because of the platform, things like that. And mm -hmm. so now a lot of those were obviously NDA, yeah. but being able to tell those stories, I think yeah. really helps other companies like them understand the value of four net rings. Yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, you mentioned NDA. I mean, as analysts, you know, we're, we're often, you know, disclosed on, on roadmap and there are a lot of things that we can't talk about, but I will say one thing. What I saw that's going to be sort of rolling out in the future, I think, is going to provide a lot of uh, a lot of tailwind, you know, for Fortinet yeah. to, to go capitalize on some of the things that we've been talking about today. So. Yeah. Well, just from an overall market perspective, right? We when you look at the audience that was in Nvidia's GTC event this week, right? It's yeah. Matt, everyone's interested. Yeah, and you were in, you were there in yeah. DC, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's interested in AI. I think now that AI is starting to hit that inflection point, we're moving to from pilots to production. Now you have to start worrying about things like how do I manage my data? Yeah. How do I secure my data? Yeah. So how do this, I secure the usage of AI? Right? So this uptick yeah. that we've seen on this compute side, mm -hmm. I think really hasn't hit network security yet. I agree. And so if you believe that 
they're both an important part of the overall AI ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we are going to see security, you know, create a rising tide for all the vendors. The question is, can Fortinet actually grow from that tide disproportionately? Right. They certainly have the product to do it. Now, they do. Now it's going to be interesting to see if they have the go-to-market to do it. Yeah. yeah. It will be interesting. Yeah. So. So. All right. All right. Well, Anything yeah. else you want to add? No, I think that's it. All I right. We covered everything. So until, I guess, the next place I see you. Yeah. <laughs> on behalf of Willem, ZSK of Allison. Thanks for watching. Why don't you give us a like and hit that subscribe button.